I think first in. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to OT Echo. I'm Kate Barlow, the founder and host for today's meeting. It's October 12th, 2023. And today, Karina Efting is here to talk about lymphedema. Uh, please mute yourselves during the presentations and feel free to type your questions into the chat box. Karina will provide us with a presentation, and then we will have a guest presenter, Abigail Leslie, today for the case study. Um, once the case study has been prevented, presented. We will then break out into small rooms to discuss it. And uh, thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Time out of your day to continue your education and learn more. I really appreciate everyone being here. And thank you so much, uh, Karina, for volunteering to present today. Much appreciated. The floor is yours. Okay. Thank you very much, Kate and Kelsey and everybody else involved. Um, thank you very much for coming today. I know how difficult it is in a therapist day and healthcare workers day to um, jump into a meeting like this. Um, and uh, please forgive me in advance, my technical skills are slightly uh, lacking, which is why I try to do these things to keep up with everything. Um, but generally uh, today, what I want to uh, go over is um, basically the lymphedema um, protocol and program that I have in place in my clinic, um, as well as how I educate patients. Um, and then a little bit of information about um, an intro to breast cancer, um, an intro to lymphedema, and then we have a guest um, case study as well. Um, I am an occupational therapist who has been working in the field for about 24 years now. Um, after 20 or so, we kind of stopped counting. So, um, so you know, I've I've had an experience um, in mostly outpatient, but I was a travel therapist before that, so I had um, a lot of opportunities to travel all over the West Coast and East Coast. Um, and uh, worked in many settings um, during those times. Um, can everybody hear me okay and see everything okay? All right. Yeah, I'll look to I'll look to Kate to <laughs> guide me through. Appreciate that. So lymphedema therapy. Um, what is it? So basically, I like to tell my patients that. It's really nothing to be scared of. Lymphedema is really just a fancy word for edema, which means swelling. The reason we get so concerned about it is because it is your lymphatic system. It is your immune system. So what you're seeing on your screen right now is a picture of the lymphatic system. You can see um, the tiny nodes, the lymph nodes in green and the vessels that transport through the body. Um, it's basically the plumbing of the body. Oh, sorry. You can go back. Can you go back one slide? Um, it's the plumbing of the body. So it involves vessels and nodes, um, that are absorbing fluid from the tissues and transporting it into the, um, venous uh, circulation. It, remo it removes impurities and produces white blood cells to fight infection. Basically, the heart pumps fluid out um, and the lymph system returns it back to the core of the body to be purified and, and um, cleansed. Okay, go ahead, next slide. Moment, it just covered the controls then we pull there we go okay so this is a picture of the lymphatic system you can see lymph nodes around the neck um in the axilla and armpit area in the chest wall um in the groin in the knees even in the elbows and then there's this network of vessels that is close to the surface of the skin and so with that, the location of the vessels, we're able to influence uh, the lymphatic system very easily from the outside in. So um, basically, again, how the system works is the heart pumps fluid out, but there's not really a pump at your feet to return it back. So we rely on this valve and channel system 
moving that fluid back to the core of the body, back to the large vessels in the core so that it can be um, flushed out, cleansed and flushed out. Okay, all right, go ahead. So this image is one I like to show patients um, a lot. Um, basically how the system is propelled is actually with the muscle pumping action of the arms and legs. So it's this muscle pumping action against the valves and channels that help move that fluid back to the core of the body so that it can be clean. So this, this um, theory, this, or this uh, diagram um, actually explains why compression is really he helpful in the, um, in, on the limbs or on the legs, uh, the arms or legs, because that compression against the pumping action of the valve and channel system helps push the fluid out of the limbs, just like a sponge. So that's why exercise becomes an important um, pillar of the uh, the, the, um, the lymph protocol and, and lymph uh, treatment. So we're always encouraging gentle active range of motion exercise with these patients. Okay, so here you can see some images um, of uh, a normal versus um, a lymph system that has increased swelling. Um, what we're seeing here is really the lymph edema building up and the limb has difficulty with draining, draining that fluid without additional assistance. Okay, you can go ahead. Okay, so generally speaking, lymphedema is really a secondary diagnosis to a primary cause. Um, there are several re reasons why the lymphatic system um, can slow down, um, a couple of which include uh, an orthopedic surgery, such as like an ankle or knee or hip replacement surgery, or even an oncology surgery, um, like a, a breast surgery, where we're removing lymph nodes and breast tissue and lymph nodes in the chest wall. Um, at that point, it's like basically removing some of the plumbing from the lymphatic system. And so that's why the fluid increases. Um, I, I generally like my patients to think of lymphedema as really a symptom and not a disease. Um, although there are primary um, causes of lymphedema, congenital causes um, where individuals are um, born without part of the lymphatic system, and um, another major cause um, of lymphedema is it can be a parasite called filariasis, um, which is very common um, in the world. Um, so I'd like to go back to that topic, especially since we're on an international forum, um, because uh, you know the things that we see to be issues with lymphedema in the United States can be very different than um, the world uh, stage and the world occupational therapy arenas. So I think that would be a good topic of conversation if um, anybody else would like to discuss that. So um, as far as uh, maintenance of swelling, um, lymphatic treatment is considered the gold standard. Um, this term complete decongestive therapy uh, is a, a general term involving uh, pretty much five pillars of treatment. Um, the first of which can be man MLD, which is manual lymphatic drainage. Uh, then we are looking for some way to, um, so the MLD is a, is a manual medical massage to move the fluid in a medical pathway, um, a safe medical pathway. Then we need some way for the fluid to um, to stay out of the system or not backfill into the system. So we use compression bandaging. And then almost always the final management stage involves uh, a compression garment. We also keep careful um, attention to uh, the health of the skin and, and the patient. 
as well as gentle exercises. So MLD, which is manual lymph drainage, is a type of massage that uh, follows the direction of the lymphatic flow to push the fluid through the proper channels. It's a very gentle massage. It's, it should not be painful. It's basically a gentle tractioning of the skin. Um, the lymph vessels are right below the surface of the skin. So we're able to influence them and we need to be um, delicate with them and, and um, we can't put too much pressure or we'll damage the vessels. Okay, Tubi Grip is one of the um, tools we use um, in our clinic to provide temporary compression while we're, we're reducing the leg. And um, that is, uh, that provides that, that temporary compression effect um, before, uh, before we fit with the final garment. Compression bandaging is also an effective tool. Um, it tends to be a more um, comprehensive um, way to move the fluid um, out of the leg. It's very effective for fibrotic edema um, or very chronic edema that has not been treated. Um, the compression bandaging would be something that the patient can keep on for 23.5 hours but they, um, they do need to take it off for the skin to uh, be cleansed and, and to breathe before they'd return to another compression bandage. And then these are two examples of compression garments. Um, the top one is a compression sleeve and the bottom one is a knee-high um, garment. These are just two examples of common uh, compression garments that we see in the market or th that we use uh, frequently. Um, and they are what provides the maintenance step for, uh, for compression. So lymphedema um, dues include exercising um, the joints, eat well, maintaining um, a healthy weight, uh, keeping the skin hydrated and moisturized. Um, we try to avoid extremes of temperature, um, tight fitting shoes or clothing, um, cut scrapes, insect bites, or exposure to germs. Um, Venus staining is a concept I like to talk about with my, my students and my patients. Um, one of the most, one of the um, frequent diagnosis we see that can can attribute to lymphedema is chronic venous insufficiency. And with chronic venous insufficiency, we sometimes see this vein, uh, venous staining pattern as this dark purple or discoloration of the legs. Um, this we contrast with cellulitis, which can be um, a, a, a risk of, of infection. So when we talk about venous staining, we talk about kind of this sock-like pattern that you can see in these pictures. And then go ahead and, and move forward to the next slide. With cellulitis, we see more of a bright, shiny uh, red appearance, um, sometimes going into the foot, sometimes not. Um, and the reason I like to... Um, you know, teach on this issue is because very frequently those two um, situations look very similar. And when we're dealing with cellulitis, we're talking about a bacterial skin infection. And that would be something that you'd want to consult the, the healthcare provider or the doctor um, because an, uh, an antibiotic would be necessary before it becomes um, a systemic infection risk. Um, versus venous staining, which is more of a chronic condition. Um, so, so we always talk about um, signs and symptoms of infection with our patients. Um, generally speaking with infection, we're seeing spreading redness, um, additional swelling, uh, tenderness, pain, uh, warmth, fever, blisters, 
open or draining sores or a foul odor. But the big um, red flag signs I, I think that are most common are that spreading redness and fever. Those are things that become that can make it an, an urgent situation. Um, Kelsey, if you can go to um, the the next lymphedema packet or the next lymphedema PowerPoint. Yes, I'm gonna get it now. Thank you. Okay. And I apologize in advance. I have my dog with me here at home, so he uh, he might be bark barking at outdoor things. Um, so nobody, please don't be alarmed. He's very friendly. <laughs> Um, actually, is there one more lymphedema packet be before mm -hmm. the breast cancer? Yes. It's like more um, written written pieces. Okay, so um, so we talked about some of these things already. Um, the lymphatic system being the plumbing of the body. Um, you know, it's re it, the reason we get so concerned about um, pooling fluid in an area is because it really can become like a hotbed for infection. And when we're talking about the lymphatics, we're talking about your immune system. And in a lot of these populations, we're talking about patients who have a compromised immune system. So, um, so that is that is why it becomes really critical to move the fluid out of the system. Um, the good news is that there's ways to work on this, and the tools are very very effective. Okay, so we saw this image already. We saw that. Um, the, the steps here, let's stop here. The steps um, with prevention um, include just your basics, you know, taking care of the skin, um, exercising well, eat well, drink well, um, and wearing a proper fitting garment. Um, we encourage patients to avoid cuts, avoid any portals of infection. So cut scrapes, insect bites, um, you know, monitoring those areas, avoiding extremes of temperatures, um, of, in the upper extremities, avoiding uh, blood pressure or needle sticks to the affected arm. Um, and then poor body position. Um, this becomes uh, an issue with patients with lower extremities if they are not sleeping in a horizontal position. We find it frequently come up that um, some, some patients are sleeping in like a reclining chair um, where their legs do not completely come to a horizontal position. And when you sleep at night, that is the natural time that the, the fluid returns from the legs back to the core of the body. And so, you know, in that recliner or horizontal position, um, we find that that fluid just accumulates and accumulates. So uh, what I usually educate patients about is that, you know, I don't, if, if they are sitting and resting, they can elevate their legs to help fight against gravity, but they shouldn't be spending extra time sitting, resting because, um, that, that, um, pumping action of the muscles is really what's moving that fluid out. So activity level is important. Um, and then, uh, the sleep positioning as well, avoiding sleeping in like a recliner. 
All right, we can scroll down. I think there's a couple more pictures with, yeah. So these are basically the, the motion exercises that we recommend. Um, and I tell patients, you can think of these as moving each joint of the leg. So toe curls, ankle pumps, ankles in a circle, um, bending of the knees, um, you know, bending of the hips, walking, all those things are, are, are great, um, adjuncts to the, uh, to the, uh, protocol. Okay. So this again is that venous staining versus cellulitis. Um, and we're looking for, you know, spreading redness and body fever. Um, those things can make this situation become very, um, uh, urgent or emergent. This, um, this is, uh, some information about doing, um, instructions on self massage. Um, frequently it happens in my clinic that I see a patient one time and then because of distance or insurance coverage, they're not able to, they're, they're not able to come back into the clinic. So, um, what's listed below is a more simplified version of uh, the manual lymph drainage exercise that they can do um, to themselves at home or have a family or teach a family member to do. So we actually start on the belly and then uh, we work down the leg, um, dividing the leg in four sections. Um, and what we're doing is a light tractioning, moving the fluid up the leg back to the core of the body so it can be flushed out. So each of these diagrams shows that picture. And we work down the body and then we down the limb and then all the way back up. So we always describe this as um, clearing a traffic accident. We have to clear the ramp before we can get to the congested traffic and then we work our way back up. This is just an example of um, the documentation I use to, um, to educate the patient about the changes that we're seeing in the girth measurements. So this is an example of the leg. And I think that might be it. Yeah. Should we pause here? Does, um, does anybody have any questions or if there's topics or, or areas that you want to discuss more, we can add that. Well, if there aren't any more questions, we can move right into our case study. How does that sound? Okay, did uh, I can do the last PowerPoint on the breast cancer information, and then we can go from there. we can move on to the case study. Sounds good. So while Kelsey's pulling that up, I see members from all over the world today, Greece, Tanzania, Uganda, Ghana, Ecuador, Rwanda, Kenya, Morocco, Nigeria, the US. Thank you all so much for coming. We have a really good representation from therapists all over the world today. It's great to see everyone. And if I could ask a question to everyone, one of the reasons I wanted to participate in this forum is that question that I was asking um, earlier about um, lymphedema treatment throughout the world. Um, what we hear in the US is that 90% um, of lymphedema cases in the world are actually caused by a parasite called filariasis, which um, is able to penetrate the skin and starts to attack the lymphatic system. Um, does anybody have any um, reference with that or um, is there a need um, in areas that you're from to work on that? And, you know, don't be shy if we want to discuss it later in the chat or so. 
Um, actually, Aika has a question in the chat. Okay. Um, she asked, mm -hmm. can an ankle fracture affect the lymphatic system? And how do, how do you differentiate between a normal sw swelling and lymphedema? So that's a great question. I get that question all the time from our physical therapists. Um, what is the difference between lymphedema and, you know, orthopedic edema? And generally speaking, there's, I really don't differentiate between the two. So if you have um, a patient that has, you know, an ankle, ankle swelling from a surgery or an injury, um, you know, it definitely can be treated with this lymphatic protocol. Um, generally speaking, the definition um, or the diagnosis of lymphedema is a three centimeter difference from the affected leg to the unaffected leg. Um, but very frequently, both patients' legs are affected. Um, so we really don't, you know, it's not a steadfast rule. So, um, so yeah, if that, if that answers your question, I think, um, you know, lymphedema protocols, uh, can, can be used very well for, um, orthopedic swelling, um, you know, injury swelling. Um, there are contraindications, um, with, to, uh, to lymphatic protocol, which mostly involve pushing, um, fluid against a weaker, uh, heart or, um, kidney system, uh, or, you know, or weaker kidney. So end range, um, end stage, uh, renal disease or, uh, congestive heart failure. Um, but otherwise, you know, and of course infection and clot and things like that, but otherwise it, it can provide a really effective treatment for, for, um, general, uh, swelling. Thanks, Karina. We have one more question. Uh, Zoe was wondering, how long does a patient keep on their compression stockings for? So that's a that's the the always the the crystal ball question we say <laughs> with patients. Um, it really depends on um, what the primary cause is of the swelling. Um, so, for example, to contrast, if we're talking about um, chronic venous insufficiency where the valve and channel system is slowing down, that's more of a long-term um, lifetime maintenance of swelling versus maybe a knee replacement um, where the system has just slowed down and needs some extra help to um, assist to reduce the swelling with compression garments while the patient is going through uh, rehab of their knee. So those are, those are two examples, um, but it's a great question because we, uh, patients ask that of us all the time. So really the, the bottom line answer is that compression can be helpful um, for as long as the patient ha continues with swelling. Okay, great. Thank you, Karina. We have five more minutes before the case study. So please go ahead and talk to us about breast cancer. Okay, so um, breast breast cancer is one of the the uh, diagnoses we see that really changes the lymphatic system quite a bit. Uh, we're talking about moving um, or lymph lymph nodes and removal of lymph nodes and lymph vessels and damage from radiation chemo. So these are you know more permanent changes where patients really need a long term plan for dealing with edema. So let's go ahead and just quickly go through, um, you know, as far as breast cancer, there's really no known exact etiology. Um, most women really are not able to pinpoint what the cause is, but we do know that breast cancer causes damage to the DNA of the cell. Go ahead. Um, in the United States, one in eight women will be diagnosed. Um, it's more common in women, but can occur in men. And it's the leading, leading uh, the second leading cause of death um, in women in the U.S. Go ahead. Oops. Uh, yeah, and in the U.S., there's 3.3 million breast cancer survivors alive, so it's a very preventable um, uh, form of cancer. Go ahead. 
Uh, the tumor is generally of two types, benign, which is non-cancerous, or malignant, which is cancerous. Um, we also can see metastatic cancer where the cancer has spread to other parts of the body um, and potentially forms a secondary tumor. Okay, surgically we see um, a, a partial mastectomy, which is which is a lumpectomy in the United States. We see full mastectomy, we see radical mastectomy, um, sometimes even prophylactic uh, bilateral mastectomy. We also see sentinel node biopsy and axillary node bi uh, dissections where the, the lymph node is tested and um, uh, removed. Luckily in the United States, we um, are using a lot of sentinel node biopsy where they can test the nodes for cancer and we can take less and less um, lymph nodes. Go ahead and you can skip through this. Um, radi sorry, radiation and chemo. Um, side effects can be a loss of appetite, nausea and vomiting, um, weakness and fatigue. So these are things that we're thinking about as we're treating um, our lymphedema population or breast cancer population. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, this is just an image of reconstruction. So on the left, you can see a mastectomy scar. Um, and what we're trying to create with reconstruction of the breast is a good envelope for an expander or implant so that the um, patient can return to normal uh, body uh, image. This is an example a diagram of a tran flap where we're taking part of the um, abdominal area to form that envelope. Um, these surgeries tend to be very complicated, requiring a lot of medical staff and, and surgical staff. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. You can skip to the next slide. Um, so, oops. Um, so go ahead and go back to, I think. Um, maybe one more. Oh, okay, sorry. Forward one. Um, you know, we're considering many things with all this treatment. Um, one of the big ones is upper extremity limitations. Uh, with the surgery and pain and positioning, we see a lot of difficulty with upper extremity range of motion, um, as well as edema, as well as scar management issues, um, you know, pain management issues. Um, the donor site also needs to be uh, uh, checked as well. Go ahead, you can move forward. Okay, uh, treatment considerations. These are things we're using lymph management, gentle exercise, returning to ADLs, um, energy conservation, and, and other psychological issues. Um, go ahead. Okay, the typical treatment team members, um, and the reason why this is really important is because there are a lot of people that can support and be involved in the breast cancer uh, case. So physician, um, specialist, breast surgeon, radiation oncologist, medical oncologist, um, the, a cancer rehab therapist. Um, so in the U.S., um, therapists um, can go for additional certification and credentialing with lymphedema, as well as um, cancer rehab, where they are trained in, um, you know, the, the best care of all stages of cancer treatment. Um, certified lymphedema therapists are involved, nursing, physical therapy, social services, um, psychiatry, uh, psychology, religious services, and um, support support groups as well. So there's a lot of people that can be involved in the treatment team. Um, and th I think that's it. We've got to, uh, we can we can move on to the case study, unless there's any other questions or discussion. Great. Thank you so much, Karina. Well, any questions we can take now while Kelsey is pulling up the case study? And um, Abigail Leslie is going to be presenting this case study. And so when we do the call for a case study, this is really what we're looking for. So thank you so much, uh, Abigail, for um, volunteering to present this case study. 
And moving forward every month when we give the topic area, if you would like to present uh, moving forward, just let us know. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. My name is Abigail Leslie. Uh, I've been practicing over 10 years. I'm originally from Kenya, but I've been in Texas for 20 years. So I'm certified in lymphedema. Anyways, I'll go straight ahead to the case. Okay, this is a case of a 62-year-old female who came to the clinic in summer 2016 in Arlington, Texas with uh, complaints of non-functional right hand movement secondary to breast cancer related lymphedema after radical mastectomy with axillary nerve dissection with stage two lymphedema that was never screened or treated for 20 years. The patient came to the clinic. She was feeling extremely abnormal with increased heaviness of the right hand. Patient stated to me, I've been, feel, I've been like this for 20 years. I'm just trying my life to see if the treatment will work. She was funny even about it. If it doesn't work, it's fine because I've lived with this situation for the last 20 years. And I told the patient uh, the treatment should be able to work, but we'll see. And I encourage her just to get started with, this tre with the treatment plan. Per observation, the right hand was more edematous than the left hand. I did assess the patient and there was some gut difference between the left and the right hand that warranted the patient to receive a skilled, complete decongestive therapy, which is also known as CDT in short. Oh, um, this, case is this case study, sorry, provides evidence-based results uh, that, show that shows us that early screening and skilled treatment by a certified lymphedema therapy, therapist, patient education on self-assessment after breast-related lymphedema is necessary to prevent further progression of lymphedema, limiting patients' participation in occupational performance and uh, poor quality of life secondary to patient being incapacitated in performing daily functions like dressing, cooking, bathing, toileting, grooming, affecting most areas of ADLs and IADLs. The problem list that I, I got from the patient when I was assessing, as a, I was a, I'm sorry, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> when I was assessing the patient were pain, dec decreased ADLs, emotional and psychological distress, dec decreased part participation in ADLs and IADLs, leading to dec decreased participation in occupational performance and pure quality of life with psychological distress. The treatment was client-centered and goals were formulated per patient's desire to resume her, her roles. Those were the gut differences that I use, uh, I found uh, using um, a tape measure. Uh, these are the questions uh, uh, that uh, I formulated for the groups when we go to our break rooms. I'll go ahead and read the questions. What are some of the signs and symptoms of lymphedema this patient is manifesting? The second question, what occupational therapy assessment tools can be used in this case study? Number three, name some of the limitations that this patient is exhibiting that decreases participation in occupational performance. The fourth question is name the golden treatment that is used in this case to decrease the abnormal swelling. And number five, the last question, which goals are appropriate for this patient treatment plan? That's it. Abigail, that was fantastic. Thank you so much. I also get nervous every month, even though I've been doing this for a few years. Uh, so you. we appreciate you um, volunteering. Yes. Um, before we move into the breakout rooms, I have them all set. There's about six people in each room. There was a question that came into the chat room. So Karina, real quick. Um, there was a, David was wondering when he did his training years ago, he used hot and cold contrast baths for edema. Is it appropriate for lymphedema treatment? So um, 
Yeah, that's a great question. Um, my experience with contrast baths is that um, the research does support that in um, more of an acute um, swelling phase, inflammatory phase. Um, so depending on um, what level the lymphedema is, um, whether it be, you know, a, a, an acute lymphedema or a chronic lymphedema, um, we would have to think about those considerations. Um, generally speaking, um, your contrast bath of, you know, cold versus hot, you know, cold is going to constrict the blood vessels. The heat is going to increase the blood vessels. So if we already have pooling swelling um, because of a, a slowed systemic lymph system, um, the heat um, could increase that swelling. Um, so that's a consideration we have to consider. Um, I, my experience with more chronic lymphedema is that we do want to avoid, um, you know, the declines limb, the limb in, in heat, like a, you know, hot tub or sauna. Um, those are things that can increase the swelling, but again, it depends which, uh, which stage the, of inflammation we're talking about and what the primary, uh, diagnosis is that's causing the swelling. Great. Thank you so much. Sure. All right, everyone, we're going to move into our break rooms. There's a facilitator for each room that has the questions. We'll see you in about 10 minutes. Right. And Karina, I wasn't sure if you wanted to catch your breath or move into a room. So I was going to just ask you what you would like to do. Well, I'll move into a room. That'd be okay. great. Do I need to do anything? Nope, I'm going to. Um... This was great. I, I'm very excited about this format. It's fantastic. Well, welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a great discussion in your groups. I hope you don't mind. I'm just going to call on the facilitators to sort of recap what went on uh, in their meetings. Uh, Adonis, do you want to go first? Sure. Well, uh, we weren't able to fulfill the whole uh, questions, but shall I start with the first one? Sounds great. It was a short breakout room today. Exactly. Well, the answers we gave for the first uh, question is that uh, there is a right side uh, of the body uh, lymphedema. Uh, it's a chronic con condition. Uh, it shows pain. We have uh, the gears. And that's it. So shall I tell you more from the other questions too? Sure, if you'd like to. Well, uh, we mentioned uh, the lymphedema quality of life inventory for the assessment tools. Uh, also, we would assess the ROM uh, and maybe use the DAS uh, and the COPM. Mm, but the third question, uh, we have decreased range of emotion, of motion. We have uh, ADLs and IADLs uh, uh, reduced. A sensation with tactile like hot, cold, kinesthesia. And uh, for the fourth uh, question, the golden rule will be uh, the swelling. Um, excuse me, but I'm not that keen on this uh, terminology. Uh, the protocol that we showed earlier. Okay. OTT or something like this and uh, encourage uh, energy techniques kinesthetically. Great, that sounds like a very productive conversation. That's fantastic. Thank you. Sarah, do you wanna go next? Um, I'm going to try to validate some of the uh, comments that were just made. There was a nice assessment of using the dash. We actually found the Google and dropped that link in. 
of course, I don't have it still open on my computer to drop it. If you're not familiar with it, it's a pretty easy to use tool um, for sure. Um, I did actually have, there was one question from the group, and I don't know if our participant is still here, asking about another assessment tool, if it would be contraindicated. Um, and I just couldn't speak. Uh, maybe Karina might be able to help with that if Modesta is able to ask that question. And if not, no big deal. Uh, but otherwise, we really just talked about some of the observations and screening and assessment tools uh, related to this work. Thank you. Um, sure, I can I can speak on it. it which um, I, I missed the tool that it, that they were talking. Uh, about. Actually, me too because I didn't uh, I, I didn't recognize it or understand it. Um, yes, it's the so good that's why I heard. Um, but I'm not sure if our colleague is here. Um, yes, I'm here. To... Hello. Oh, okay, great. Okay, uh, I was talking about the Godet sign and whether or not because of the chronicity of the case, it is a good thing to use it in this case particularly. Can you spell that? What it, What is it called? G-O-D-E-T. G-O-D-E-T. I'm not, I'm not familiar. I'll, I'll... Uh, yeah. Okay, so... Google it a second. I, um, I use very, um, simple assessment so tool it's a pulp it's a pulp compression to the to the limb uh, that we are working on and to see if the if it leaves a trace or not so whether it leaves it or not that's that should give us give us a baseline of work if I, is that the 20 minutes if you indent and yeah, it's still yeah, there yeah, in 20 okay, minutes yeah yeah so we, yes. we do we term um it pitting edema and we um you know we will do a fingerprint into the into the edema and we actually test how many seconds that it stays is that similar to what you're doing that's actually that's what i'm talking about yeah. okay great great i i didn't know it had a name g-o-d-e-t it's a good day sign. It's in French. Oh, oh, very nice. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. I learned I learned something new today. G O D E T. Go go dead. My my mom is Canadian, so I should know that word in French. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So would that be helpful at all in this case? Yes. Yes, definitely. Um we, we use that as a as kind of a clinical um, testing to to give a better description on the quality of the tissue, whether it's you know soft or pitting or fibrotic, um, and then yes, we'll we kind of will test as far as how many seconds that that mark will stay. So yes, absolutely. Great, thank you. Thank you. All right, um, Aika, do you want to um, talk about what your group discussed? So in our group, we had um, David. David was what, the one who was facilitating. I think David has the answers. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> OK, um, our group had many of the similar ideas come up thus far. There was interest in testing range of motion because decreased range of motion can be a, a problem from edema. And also maybe testing pain, so we know what level of pain the person's at. Um, in terms of other things, in terms of the different tests, uh, many things were mentioned. Uh, for, for, for problems in terms of function, you know, we didn't know the specific ADLs, but it was basically finding out what ADLs are limited. The other question that came up was very interesting was what you would do if you had a person with lymphedema plus uh, injury, whether you know, because you you wouldn't be able to do some of these compression things, you might not be able to do the massage. So that was an area that was brought up. And I said, I didn't know the answer, but, but currently you might know the answer. David, can you repeat the question? If it's a, if just repeat that question one more time. If a person has lymphedema but also has open sores, okay. So I can I can speak to that a little. Um, it it becomes um a a you know good area of discussion because what we find um with the wound cycle that we see sometimes in the clinic in the hospital is that the wound um doesn't close unless the edema is reduced. And of course, when 
um, the, of course, to reduce the edema, um, the bandaging or um, wrapping becomes quite complicated. So um, I think it really kind of depends on the case and the severity. Um, but in my experience, um, you know, those tools can be used, um, you know, simultaneously, um, you know, but again, it depends on how safe it is as far as the exposure of the wound and checking the wound and, and uh, you know, uh, monitoring that. But yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good and, and uh, tricky situation. <laughs> Good question. Thank you. Okay, Shannon, last group. Do you want to share about your group? Hello. So we also had pretty similar answers. Um, for the signs and symptoms, we said pain, swelling, and girth measurement changes. For OT tools, um, functional independence measurement came up, uh, as well as girth measurements. Um, for limitations, we said pain, decreased range of motion, ADL deficits like dressing, bathing, um, maybe toileting came up as well. And then for global treatment, we said CDT and lymphatic protocol as well as MLD and compression. I don't think we really got to goals, but yeah. Well, that's great. Thank you um, so much. Are there any last questions? I'm sorry we're running a little bit over this month, but are there any last questions for Karina or Abigail while we have them on? No? All right. Well, thank you so much. OT Echo will send you all our certificate of attendance for today. And our meetings are always going to be now the second Thursday of the month at two o'clock Eastern time. So on our website, we have all the recordings and we have the upcoming meetings. Um, so I hope you all will be able to join us for the November meeting. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. November is going to be using occupation-based assessments by Dr. Pasillas.